Hey, what's up everybody? This is Edward on another episode of Is It Worth Your Money series on Gamers Clinic. So before we begin today's video, I would like to say a quick thank you to all of you who are subscribed bringing this channel past its first 100 subscribers. So thank you again everyone for all the support. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you my feedback on one of Razer's latest flagship wireless mouse, the Razer Basilisk Ultimate. After using it as my daily mouse for a little over half a year, I'll be sharing the positive and negative experiences that I had with it and telling you why I think the Razer Bassist Ultimate is an awesome mouse, but not really worth this price tag of $170 in case you're interested in getting one. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're new here, and that's on the details. Don't get me wrong, but personally, I think the Razer Basilisk Ultimate is one really awesome wireless mouse. From the day the mouse was announced, I knew I had to get my hands on one. Aside from the almost identical form factor to the Logitech G502, which I loved at first touch back in 2015, features of this mouse that were introduced in the Razer Viper Ultimate was what made me pre-order without second thoughts. And on top of that, I can finally get a mouse with this particular form factor under the same product ecosystem as my other gaming accessories. On the outside, the dimensions and form factor of the Basilisk Ultimate is identical to the Basilisk X Hyperspeed, which I reviewed a few months ago, with the weight being similar to the X Hyperspeed with battery inserted at around 108 grams. But that's where the similarity ends. Starting from underneath the Razer Basilisk Ultimate, the improved PTFE feed is slick and the difference in movement resistance can easily be noticed if you never use a mouse with this kind of feed. There's also a little storage compartment for storing the USB 2.4GHz adapter when you want to bring the mouse on the go. Near the top is a scroll wheel resistance adjustment wheel, which is a neat addition, though there's no infinity scroll here like on Logitech's mouse. And next to a power switch, there's a button that can cycle between 5 settings profiles stored on the onboard memory which is useful when you want to use the mouse on another computer without Razer Synapse installed. On the left side, there is an extra DPI clutch paddle which I never really use but it is there for those who might need it. And of course, being a Razer, R Razer product, there are 14 zones of customizable RGB lighting excluding the one strip on the dock itself. And to add a quick note on the RGB lights here, the RGB will remain always on when you choose to charge it via the dock which could be annoying if your gaming computer is in your bedroom. Currently, there is no options to turn them off even after you have turned off the power switch beneath the mouse, but if you already own this mouse and figured out how to turn them off, please share with us in the comments below. Inside, it is where the Razer Bass's Ultimate really stand out. The mouse comes with Razer's latest hyperspeed wireless technology that according to Razer is 25% faster than any wireless technology available and will not be interrupted by data saturated environments, which I personally can vouch for that really works. And the right and left mouse buttons are equipped with Razer's latest optical mechanical switches, which has three times faster actuation speeds compared to traditional mechanical switches. And are also more durable and rated up to 70 million kicks as opposed to 50 million clicks. As for the sensor, it uses Razer's Focus Plus op optical sensor which Razer claims to have the highest DPI and IPS tracking in the market for now and has up to 99.6 resolution accuracy. This simply means that you will have more accurate fast mouse movements during fast paced gaming. This new sensor also allows for advanced lift off distance customization which is a great feature that prevents the cursor from jumping around randomly when you need to reposition your hand and mouse in the game. So armed with the latest tech from Razer for over half a year, the two things that I appreciate and love the most are the Focus Plus sensor and the hyperspeed wireless technology. The Focus Plus sensor's tracking is dead on accurate both in fast paced FPS gaming and Photoshop Illustrator editing especially when using the brush and pen tools. The sensor works well on most surfaces except glass, but tracking accuracy is best used when on a mouse pad. And a quick note on mouse pads, if you use this PTFE feed on a hard mouse pad, will glide freely with almost no resistance for speed gaming. And together with a thousand hertz polling over Razer Hyperspeed wireless connection, the tracking is always consistent and accurate. 
Same as the Razer Viper Ultimate and Razer Basic X Hyperspeed, when used in a crowded wireless environment, I have not had any interference or lag. The connection is so seamless that sometimes I really forget that I am using a wireless mouse and end up leaving it on overnight. But luckily, the mouse has an auto sleep function that puts itself into sleep mode. After a few minutes of inactivity, which you can set in the Synapse apps, so it doesn't run out of battery. And talking about battery, on average, I get around 45 hours of usage on a full charge with RGB lights set to 40% brightness. And if the mouse runs out of juice while you're still gaming, you can always plug in the included micro USB cable to continue using the mouse. But one thing I don't like is that Razer designed the mouse micro USB port to fit only the cable from Razer. So if your cable is broken, you can only use Razer's $14 replacement cable or if you need a longer cable, you're stuck with 1.8 meter or 6 feet cable that came with the mouse. Unless, of course, you can find a micro USB cable that is small enough to fit into the hole. So with all these excellent features, why do I personally think that this mouse is not worth $170? I mean, I understand that the price is to cover Razer's research and development costs for these new technologies, which they deserve for delivering tech that actually works. But I feel that for a flagship product at this premium price range, the quality control and assurance should be close to flawless and not give the end user additional problems to tackle. The padding on the thumb rest of the first unit I bought separated from the mouse only a few days of use, so I exchanged it for a new one. And the second unit had no problems for a few months, but now it sometimes will not charge properly when placed on the dock. The RGB will light up and cycle through the color spectrum instead of the usual red, yellow, or green charge level indication colors. So this requires me to remove the mouse and place it back on the dock again until the magnetic connections below are secure properly so that it will properly charge. But luckily, Razer now offers two-year warranty on their keyboard and mouse products, so I can send it back and claim for a replacement. Meantime, however, I'll have to find or purchase another mouse for use. So at the end of the day, if you have the budget and are considering getting an excellent wireless mouse, then the Razer Basis Ultimate is a choice that you will not regret if you are willing to accept the possibility of running into some quality shortcomings and having to go through the extra process of returning or exchanging the mouse while having a spare gaming mouse around while you wait for the replacement to arrive. And if, th if this form factor is not your Cinderella's glass slipper, then the Razer Viper Ultimate is also an excellent alternative choice with ambidextrous form factor, super lightweight of 74 grams and costs $20 less than the Basilisk Ultimate. All right, thank you as always for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, hit that like button as it will help this channel a lot more than you'll know it. And I'll see you again in the next video.